we agreed to tonight's public program, uh, August 13, part of the uh, Summer School of School 2019. Tonight we have uh, two panels and we have a DJ session in the end. It's going to be a long night. So, uh, breathe in. <laughs> So, uh, for you that uh, finished courses today, I hope you had a, a meaningful experience, if I can say. Uh, today, I think courses uh, taught by Dave uh, Jaloshi and Bernard Rudiger uh, ended. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about the Seneca Tips course, uh, about the schedule. So tonight on the program we have uh, uh, a presentation of, of uh, winners of Young Visual Artists Awards from uh, three countries. Uh, we started with this format uh, since last year. Uh, the general idea is to provide a platform for this award uh, through summer school schools so that uh, the general uh, public uh, participants of the program uh, get an opportunity to know more about developments in the young art scenes uh, around us and in Kosovo. Uh, this year we will show uh, works of uh, winning artists from three countries uh, from 2018 award. Uh, uh, winners of uh, Young Visual Artists Award uh, uh, from Kosovo called uh, Artists of Tomorrow is Chandra's data. Nadezha Kraczarski is the winner of uh, uh, Mangelos Award, uh, yeah, organized in Serbia by Mangelos Foundation and uh, author. Uh, Lek Jaloshi is the winner of Ardi Award, uh, organized uh, uh, since the last two years by uh, Zeta, Center for the Free Art in Tirana. Uh, we, uh, we also invited Adrian Deva, uh, uh, a painter, uh, originally from Kosovo, uh, uh, teaches and lives in Detroit, in Michigan, in the US, member of the jury of uh, the uh, Artists of Tomorrow Award in the past two editions uh, in Kosovo, uh, to moderate the panel. Uh, I'm very happy that we could organize this panel this year. Uh, I'll just present briefly what's coming after, and then I'll give the floor to Adriana. Uh, uh, following uh, this panel, we will have a presentation by Dr. Silvani, uh, in discussion with Sergei Boynik, uh, and in the end, we will have a DJ session with Samika team. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, the floor is yours, Adrian. Thank you, Albert. Uh, I know that many of you know already what a Young Visual Artist Award is, but probably few of you don't. Just so that you know, we can build a bit of a context for the. Uh, upcoming short, brief, 15-minute presentations of, of individual work by three um, award reci recipients. Young Visual Artist Award is a program established uh, in 1990. Um, its founding mission is to promote uh, contemporary art, foster cultural exchange, and build uh, capacity of local art NGOs such as uh, Stazione. Um, it operates in partnership with uh, similar places such as this one, uh, art-focused NGOs, um, and it conducts an open call with a uh, transparent jury process, usually a, a five-member international jury that uh, selects an award recipient uh, for a particular year. It's an annual in most countries. There are 10 or 11 participating countries right now. Uh, I'm really uh, uh, painting this in really broad lines so that we can continue with uh, uh, presentations, but uh, the award recipients then uh, gets to go to uh, have a really nice residency in the uh, last few years. It has been Residency Unlimited in New York. A residency that is uh, designed around artists young artists' particular interests and, and needs and so on. So it's a very, very re rewarding experience. Um, um, Residency Unlimited um, hosts artists for two months. Uh, the idea is for the artists to come back enriched with, with uh, new experiences and of course then contribute 
in their own um, countries in the art scene. Tonight we have three award recipients. I have had the, the uh, utmost pleasure and opportunity to serve twice as Albert said as a chair, uh, both in 2018 and 17 here. Uh, and um, uh, it is of course an uh, unfortunate uh, process that has to end with a single award recipient because usually the, the quality of, of uh, Interested uh, artists or, or, or applicants is, uh, you know, could potentially um, call for more than a single winner. But for all uh, interested uh, artists, uh, a, a word of encouragement to apply and keep applying, even if you get. So that I don't take any more uh, time, we have a packed program tonight. Um, three uh, award recipients of last year have all spent. Uh, couple of months in New York. Um, they have um, sh short 15 or so minute presentations to just build a bit of a context about what they do, what, what um, their main work is, and then we can continue kind of a, a, a discussion. Probably the last 10 or so minutes we can, we, we can open the floor for questions if you have any. Um, we can probably start with Shindresa. Okay. start talking about the work that I presented at this exhibition. I will start by showing a part of it. It was a video and installation, so I will show it and through experiencing it, you will know more about what I'm thinking and what I was thinking and doing and trying to do.
And this is how it looked like. Speak to the mic. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it was <coughs> more sound, sound than noise. enough. For me, it was a bit louder. What was interesting uh, during the process of working on this piece, and in general, it was the transformation that it experienced from the time that I, I started to work on it until the end. In general, okay, now it's better. Yeah. I can hear I can hear myself differently. Uh, when I applied, and it's an online application in the open call for this uh, prize, it was uh, I needed to have ten images and the idea for what you would like to do, and generally, as always, I would. I like to try to work as much as I can in a free way, and I tried. And this is also what I'm, what I'm questioning the last years: how much, how you can try to do what you want to do, going through the filters that are applied generally when you have to do something with others or in, a, in another space and how to think or to try to create different kind of spaces with different kind of freedom that I would like to have or that I would need. And I try to write and I work in images so generally I, I try to combine these things so there were some short stories and some images. One, one file with uh, three rooms of uh, a museum, or that it's like a squatting imagination that doesn't exist in the real world, or just some posters with something written in it. And then, during the time that I was working for the exhibition, since I'm studying in Ljubljana, and I was not able to come here and work for this, and it was quite, it was frustrating for me, because I was waiting for Visa to come back. And I came just last, last week, and I managed to find then the objects that I was planning to have, and during that time I was working remotely from there, and then making sketches and thinking for the space, and communicating virtually with people from the gallery. So, why everything exists like this, it's also part of all these things that I experienced during that time, but not just during that time, but in general. I don't know now, because I think that... I know the story in general for all the objects that are here, while they are here, but I don't feel that I can tell it now. I think that that's why I wanted to show the video because it it was easier than talking. <laughs> and also because I feel that even if I start to talk, it would be again just my interpretation of what I thought or I wanted to be. But what I wanted also to be, it is that all the pieces are so more experiential. I don't know, it's more just experience of everyone and a bit more... Mm, that everyone, when it is in this space, would feel something and maybe these objects to them have different symbolism and different meaning, even if that it's not what I wanted to do, again, it would be meaningful. So I think that, I don't know, it would be better if these things would be all here and it would be just walking and being there and then, I don't know, just have other questions or feelings and experience it. So 
We, I can, don't know. we can come back to some of the uh, objects. That Because that I feel, yes. yeah, I feel now that I just talked a lot, so I don't know. No. Very <laughs> And okay, I just remembered the title. I could talk maybe for this. Okay, maybe someone else can talk, yeah, and I can come back. Good. That's the title. Title. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, title. Title. Okay. Title is care. And okay, since the questions are also about about value that we add to things or not just to things, but to, to also to things that are not things. And then um, I was just trying to, um, and that's why, and, and then the stone, it has different, it is there because of different things, but also, I, I don't know, there are some, it is one stone that was precious stone, and one stone that it, it, that it has more this kind of, I don't know, more this value, that is more valuable one, and one that is a daily stone that you can just find on the street, and they were treated in the same way, and uh, placed in the same way in these glass cubes to be saved, so I, I don't know. I don't know if someone thought for this when it was in front of them like this, but this was, for example, the feeling that I wanted, and then uh, this, this stone came, because it was one story of the stone that was presented also in another exhibition here, and then I, I used also parts of that story. And then, I know, and then it's this plant, that it was, first it was plant, I wanted to have a plant that it would be standing on air, without a place, or that it would be just standing on air. I was thinking how to, maybe, how to use sound, or which are the ways that, you, that I could actually make it for real to stay like that, or just to put it, and then I found this, that it's not a plan, it's like how it, fair, but I think it represents me more than flower, and it's the size of my body, and it was laying in the opposite side, And then there are some photos that I am also with these objects that I did, and they are printed in something that is like a flag, but they are just laying down. So, I don't know. That's great. That's, That's great. great. <laughs> Do you have some details of the images? Oh. No. Uh, details. Okay. <coughs> some, some We don't see the flag. Yeah, I, I, I imagine it's. Uh, yeah, it's. They are. I, 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 I thought it would be maybe enough to show just this for these 15 minutes. I was not knowing, but I have them on my Facebook page. Okay. <laughs> I showed you. <laughs> Nadezhda that will be presenting her um, project uh, next. By the way, Chandrisa has uh, uh, just completed her MFA, I believe, in uh, video and new media from the University of Fine Arts and Design in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Uh, Nadezhda has completed her MFA and is a PhD candidate at the University of Belgrade in sculpture. You can call it like that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the official. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So, we switch? Yeah, we, yeah. We, we swap places yeah. now. Yeah. We're, we're, we're tied to a single computer, so. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I will do this. I'm not a Mac user, so I only have the Mac sign glued on my, the back of my laptop. <laughs> So, yeah, this is just, um, I'm just going to be showing you fo photos of my of the installation that was uh, basically the thing that I did for the show uh, of the finest exhibition of the <coughs> award. So I'm just going to give you a brief intro because, um, yeah, I didn't even uh, wanted to apply <laughs> for the award because uh, it, it, it lasts, I don't know, a decade 
was uh, mostly that the awardees were like uh, completed artists and I was just like finished my MFA. But then I applied for some reason and I got into finance, but, but what, uh, the thing that I, didn't concern, I wasn't concerned at that point is that I actually had a solo show at the same time. So it was very stressful. <laughs> Uh, so uh, what I did is uh, uh, I, I got the space, uh, which is a, a gallery of youth center. Uh, if you've been in Belgrade, um, there was a space. Uh, uh, I got a solo show there, uh, but the place uh, was very like it's really like white cube space, and I wanted to do like uh, installation, immersive artwork, uh, which um, I later when the finance exhibition came, I kind of try to transfer into the space of the finance exhibition. So what I did here is that I transformed this place into a hospital waiting room, as you can see. And uh, the reason I, why I did it is um, it, I mean, it mostly like every art piece derives from my personal experience and also collective experience. So the, uh, it's, uh, this work is very like contextualized to like experience of being in Serbia. Uh, so the basic thing that I would like um, underline here is that we are facing like epidemic of cancer and uh, epidemic of all kinds of diseases like mental, physical and so on. So we have public health care which is completely dysfunctional and if you're not like rich you're like that's, that's what you got. So um, because I had like personally I had a lot of uh, cases in my close family that, um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna go into it, but uh, it was uh, like a lot of time spent in the hospital. And uh, what uh, triggered me to do this uh, installation is that uh, the color that you see here, that's dominant, like bluish, greenish, mint color that is present all around the health uh, institutions in Serbia. Uh, so that color is my personal trigger, you know, uh, not only mine, like everyone's that always like kind of, I get panic attacks when I see it. So anyway, what you see here, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah th there's another thing that when I went to like New York, uh, they couldn't relate to it because they have like completely privatized, you know, healthcare. I had to do a lot of explanation. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so what, yeah, yeah. So what you see here uh, is a, a site-sensitive ambient installation uh, made of two photo projections. So th the thing that you see on the wall, the in front uh, in, uh, in front wall is a reception, and on the left side is a, like a door to medic the police medical office. So these are just photo stills. They're not moving. They're just there as like uh, intangible spaces, which I uh, confronted with this uh, circular seating facility that I made on my own and I painted the walls so that was basically there are just like two elements more that I will talk later but this, uh, the thing about this uh, plant inside of the uh, this seating facility is not just like aesthetic it's uh, something I found really awkward because this is like basically yucca tree uh, but in common language in Serbia they call it tree of life I mean we call it so it's basically fake tree of, uh, fake tree of life inside of that circular seating facility that I made circular because it, when you sit, like the people around you, you basically turn your back on them. So you kind of feel that even more being stuck in between. Um, so I wanted to create with this ambient, uh, that kind of a cramp you feel like when you're hopeless and uh, when you have health issues, there's only like one instance that you go, that's, you have no more options. So that's, um, that's basically it. Um, yeah, so you see it. So it's not moving. Um, uh, the, the, the exhibition was called Nishta Spets, not much, but it's not actually accurate translation. But it's a shortage of nothing special, uh, which was um, something I had a, one, a, like, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a phrase, uh, it's a shortage that you use like when you're texting somebody, you just short your kind of, you make it shorter. And once I was like uh, chatting to my friend and asked her, hey, what's up? And she would say like, not much. And I say like, and five minutes later, she said, I I'm waiting at the oncology. Um, and she was 27 back then. And uh, I was like, I, I figured that there is uh, a lot of suspension of feelings of a lot of things in that shortage. Uh, so that's why I call it like that. And uh, 
as opposed to this whole setup is one wall, like with this mop. And the mop served there because it was full of iodine and alcohol, so it made the scent all around the space. But the, the, the quotation you see here, um, I, I'm not going to read it. Uh, it's basically saying it's a quotation of a uh, Serbian politician. I left, left it anonymous because I, I really enjoy the people fantasizing about who said the words because they're very much toxic. I mean, they're like kind of friendly, but when you get to the end of it, you say, he says, like, if you do what, uh, like, um, if you do your best, uh, then, like, the state will protect you, but you have to rise up, like, um, steadily, you know. I mean, it's that kind of, a, like, positive psychology, I mean, which is, like, basically really to toxic. And uh, what I found here is, like, that transfer of state responsibility toward individual, which is, like, uh, which stood up here as a threat, basically, in that uh, uh, unbearable situation, like. So, um, yeah, so for the finalist award, I had no time, like, really. And uh, you have the, I don't know how it works here uh, or in Albania, but uh, we have, like, really small gallery space, and there are five fi finalists every year, and so you don't have <coughs> many space there. So what I did is that I put the GoPro cam uh, and I was recording uh, people while they were m moving inside of the place uh, and it's really like from that, like this is really, yeah, uh, I hope you see it. Um, uh, so this, they, hmm? sorry. Is this the gallery or the hospital? This, this is the gallery. That was my question, question too, I wasn't sure at the end. Yeah, so, so it's a good thing, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? She's yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so that's the gallery, and uh, uh, um, this is just a frame of the recording. I didn't, I didn't have much time to, you know, present the whole recording, and it's not even like that. It doesn't matter. But they were moving as if they were like in the that place. So what I did is that, yeah, uh, put uh, a, like a fragment of this show in this random uh, uh, gallery uh, with this recording in it. So. That's basically it. Thank you. Yeah, excuse me. The line. You say it again. The line of the door. <laughs> <laughs> the light of the door is a framing light, simply. Like a it's projection. projection. Like photo. It's an image. Yeah, still image. The Doesn't door also. Yeah, yeah, it's not moving. Okay. It's permanently closed. Okay. Um, somebody wanted to. Uh, Never mind. We can do it later with the questions. We, we will open the floor for questions. Yeah. Uh, right after this. I would like to go back 20 years before uh, this prize, you know, RD Award. I was the winner in 2016, in fact. And in that period was the uh, last edition, not of Zeta, but Tika. And Albert was in the jury. And uh, I'm showing now this piece that is but it started in 2004 in Schroeder. I'm from Schroeder, this small but for so many reasons important country of uh, Albania. When I was studying at the artistic high school, studying painting in a very traditional way, and I don't remember who, but someone told me, you know, there is this important artistic movement called conceptual art. <laughs> <laughs> So I went to an uh, internet cafe of the city and I started searching a kind of statement about this important artistic movement and I found this text, I don't remember it was in Italian or in English but I, it was impossible for me to, to understand the meaning of this text so I decided to send it uh, to a legal translator <laughs> <laughs> In the city of Skodera, all these translators are also notaries, etc., because they are very close to the district court, so kind of documents are divorces and stuff like that. 
And after three days, I took this document with a paper that says, I can confirm you that the copy is identical with the original. <laughs> <laughs> so now this statement of conceptual art is a legal document of obey. <laughs> of course, after uh, years and years, I understood, you know, the, uh, the importance of this process. So I start uh, knowing something about contemporary art by a lawyer. And after I went into this is Center Pompidou before innovation. <laughs> <laughs> so I found this picture, it's something very similar happens to me also in Italy, because I lived for 12 years in Italy, that's the reason why I'm talking the bad English now. <laughs> and I, I was searching a text for Luigi, a common friend, was my professor, the text uh, of Jean Baudrillard, Le Fait Beaubourg, the text, a very critical text for this spectacular museum or center for contemporary art in Paris, and trying to find some pictures, you know, I found this image that has no date and no author, but maybe it's a military stable in Germany during the First World War, and was part of an exhibition that I did in 2016 in Villa Romana, and the exhibition was called All My Colors Turned to Clouds. After I did this video, that was the reason why I went to New York. Because <coughs> I was the winner in 2016. And this video is, it was the, a moment when I started searching something very close to the landscape of Albania and trying to develop somehow the idea of Georg and the idea of Stimmung, the idea of the atmosphere that is strongly connected with the landscape, maybe in a very romantic dimension. So I would like to, to show this video. How is this related to New York? You said that you went to New York to show it? Because, no, no, no. I was the winner of this prize because of this video. Okay. And this video... New York is a consequence. <laughs> <laughs>
was trying to come up with some questions, avoiding a tight interview style of questions and answers, you know, things that maybe uh, would be interesting to talk about. And one thing that kept coming back, and probably one of the most obvious things would be um, maybe to talk a little bit about the uh, um, overall experience and, um, I don't know, at this point at least, perceived impact of the, of the residency uh, or time spent in New York. This is, uh, you know, we live in different times and that was a wonderful story with the, with the uh, internet cafe and the legal translation of the definition of conceptual art. Uh, but the, the reality is that uh, maybe if this were to happen, I don't know, 30 or 40 or 50 years ago, um, the experience of crossing the Atlantic and um, absorbing a totally different art scene that functions in different ways and so on would have probably been a little bit more shocking. You know, the, the, the cultural shock uh, factor has probably been weakened a lot with the... Uh, presence of internet and the free flow of information. So I was thinking maybe uh, if it was, if it's possible to, um, I know that probably um, Natasha and uh, Lek have had a little bit more time to process their uh, experience since their residencies happened last calendar year. Um, Chandresas was this year in April. Um, but I guess the question would be, how do you, like, uh, what is the impact of the time that you spent there? The, I don't know, um, art that you have been exposed to, maybe research that you might have done and so on. Uh, probably some of, like two of you have had a little bit of time to also start producing some new work. Are you seeing any um, uh, do you mean actual any impact in, in, in your own work? No, I didn't produce anything. Really produce anything? No, in two, mo two months there are... You need to talk about that. No, uh, after, after return from New York. Oh, after return. Yeah, after return from New York. Is it working the mic or not? Uh, it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I say something? Okay. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, it was quite experience. I mean, regarding the fact that, uh, like, from these countries you don't have a lot of chance to see... Um, how art world functions outside of it, but it was transformative in a way that um, uh, I don't know about the other countries, but Serbia is like marching into like uh, art market uh, sphere. Uh, I'm not sure how to feel about it, but uh, I saw it in New York at its like at the peak of it, like uh, like very much. What was my first impression is that it's very much market oriented. But also, uh, like because it's huge, um, uh, there were some really uh, amazing uh, spaces where uh, some other modes of uh, communication and uh, uh, art presentation and culture work uh, were possible. So that was my biggest impression to see those uh, gaps in that, like machinery, you know. Um, but about the work, I mean, uh, every. Um, um, uh, residency uh, the, for Young Visual Artist Award is uh, mostly like networking based. So what you do there is that you have two months, and you have like uh, like two, three, four meetings per week, and you just uh, do like studio visits with some uh, like curators, researchers, uh, whatever cultural workers. Uh, that Residency Unlimited is actually doing a research for you. And it's uh, they they like kind of um, uh, put you up with the people that uh, might uh, have something in common with you. So it's very like that was a, a very useful. That's what I would say. Yeah, it was just it was the same for me. So mm. visiting museums, etc., and preparing studio visit two or three in a week. You had studio? No, it's this place inside the residency. Yeah, unlimited. Mm. This church. Yeah, it's our church. Is our church. Is it in art in general or where? No. It's in Brooklyn. Yeah. And not in location. No, no. But I think that the most complicated thing for, for me, for example, is not um, the experience that these two months is the preparation of visa application. Because in my head, 
in, in, in my first try, I barely remember. I got no visa and I decided to stay in Schroeder and waiting this year to prepare the second try, I became the head of the archive of the National Museum of Photography. <laughs> I started working. <laughs> and after that, I was a person that is working as a job for the embassy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the reason why I took the visa and I went. So, you know, sometimes it's beautiful the process or the moment before, you know? It's so the most complicated moment for an artist. Yeah. Just to explain, maybe it's important. I mean, uh, when the first application failed, so uh, the embassy, even though uh, this residency is somehow in some countries supported by the US embassy, in some not. Uh, if I uh, if I remember well, uh, they didn't give him the visa because he was not employed, basically, mm -hmm. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But then, uh, as I was accidentally in the jury, then we received this letter by the organizer and the Foundation of Europe saying that we need to reconsider and give the award to the second. Yeah, Our because they need to do the yeah. plan. Yeah. 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 The plan has to but be fulfilled. Just to, just yeah, but then I said, sorry, but we didn't uh, decide about the second. Mm -hmm. So we have the winner, and you have to fix this administrative failure and you have to secure the residency for the winner. I mean, because it's not yeah. so difficult. So you just have to increase the level of communication and get things done, you know, yeah. so basically. But otherwise, they were totally ready to uh, exactly. sacrifice an artist and send someone else just to have me in this case. Not only the embassy, the organizers. Yeah. Yeah. Not only the embassy, it's the, the organizers, organizers of the of the, the, no, the, the, uh, the are three, basically, uh, how okay. the structure works is organizers of the award in each country, uh, organizer of the residency in the year, and the, at that time, the founding institution, Trust in, which, which was uh, uh, no Foundation for Civil Society in America. Uh, but this changed in the meantime. So it was the last, uh, the last uh, generation of artists that went through the same uh, yeah. procedure. But what I'm going to say, by accident, I was just in the jury, and I was like, "Excuse me, no. I mean, you cannot do that. Otherwise." You would stay in Skoda <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> but uh, but uh, there are also other glitches in New York. This is not the only glitch. Because, I mean, I, I mentioned maybe uh, when Wooden uh, had his presentation, at some point in time, they were thinking to send only artists that can speak English. And they would hardly qualify. <laughs> also. So there are these things, but of course, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. Uh, and we try to invest in it and How long is this award going It's uh, basically, I think, it was established in late 1989 after the fall of the Berlin War. Well, Wall, uh, uh, Vassal Havel actually, uh, and a few dissident uh, artists established the award in an idea that that uh, after the Berlin Wall, uh, it was uh, a bit of a naive idea. So let's, let's send artists to the free world, right? So, and uh, they created the, the exchange only, initially only for one country, and then uh, a person which uh, somehow was close to, to Havel, uh, Wendy Lures, uh, got involved. She was the wife of the US ambassador there, mm -hmm. and made the award bigger, mm -hmm. let's say. Now it, it has a lot of And her husband became the head, the president of the uh, of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yes, so it was also an important position. So this this uh, this is the only award of this kind, actually. It still is organized. I mean, it's post Berlin Wall. Continuous award, continuous, continuous, yeah. But uh, in each country, it has different uh, positions in the in the art scene, I think. And for instance, in Serbia, there's a foundation mm. that uh, co-organizes the award. Uh, it was an exception in Kosovo, not to make this long, uh, in Kosovo, the first edition was organized by another center of country art, because it's supposed to support civil society organizations, and then somehow it ended up in the, uh, in the National Gallery, and this was the only case in all countries where a public or a state institution is 
organizing an award, which is dedicated to civil society organizations. But this also changed, yeah. Okay, I Sorry. have to say something. You better. <laughs> okay. The mic? Is it working? Yeah. Yes, it's working. Oh, okay. First, it was this uh, question. I generally, I'm a bit uh, against this need of the need to confess. Generally, I don't know anything that that you are doing or what you want to do or what you did or what you experienced. And this, okay, I am. I'm. I come from Kosovo. I'm. I was born here, I lived here most of my life, 27 years. But then the, the thing of my identity and just this kind of where are you from, it started, I started to be more from Kosovo in the time that I started not to live here and it became part of me which I would not like to be reduced to uh, this geography thing and generally Whenever you go, it's a bit complicated this, what is expected from you that you will work or how you will see things or how you would react to things just from this location or just prejudice or whatever you are carrying with this passport that is with you. So it is a long story, all the experience, I would not say whatever my experience was in New York, it's more personal, I would not say that, okay, someone from Kosovo or just someone, I don't know, all experience it like that, because everything it's, I don't know, okay, I'm not like a measure for, for, for a place or for people from a, from a certain place, and I don't know, I'm, I find it complicated to respond and to give a response. Does and I would not like, no, 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 no. But I'm just saying that I would not like to start to talk about it because I think that whatever I would be saying, it would be read also like this or just with this, uh, the famous world of, I don't know, this famous world, this cultural shock thing, I don't know. Well, or the know, difference. As, as, but as, it a, is as an artist, more so than as a, as a, you know, someone coming from a particular, you know, we, we experience that even when we when we go to neighboring countries or something. I was a few um, uh, days ago for, for for a short visit to Thessaloniki, and I hadn't been there in 20 years, and there was a bit of a. It was a bit of a shock all, all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I, specifically for you, for you, I didn't have also this feeling, but I'm saying it in, in general maybe, or just, I don't know. Yeah. I, was, I understand what Andres is saying, because yeah? when I, when I was working, like outside of when theater or art, when I was in Europe or somewhere else, like people will, will, will bring up all the time this, oh, you're a refugee, refugee, refugee. And I was never so conscious like before that I, like I know that I've been through war, but I was a kid and like I'm, I don't have that trauma because in Pristina I, was, we weren't, I wasn't that touched by the war. I was, of course, but I didn't remember myself like that. And then, like all the time, people are talking to you as a refugee, a refugee, a refugee, and then I started having these nightmares about the war all of a sudden and having troubles. And I, it's this also, I think, or I don't, or we don't understand. But we also take <laughs> things. We also see things. We also see different approaches to acting but, or making art or yeah. music or. Um, so it, 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 um. If you try to say that, I mean. But the question is yeah, about more about her work. It's yeah. not yeah. about her thing. Exactly. So if you so. want to say something about your work and your traveling, it could be interesting if you don't want it. That's yeah, I don't want, to, <laughs> I don't want to say it now because okay. it's a long answer. That's, that's, that's good. Okay. But, uh, Okay, I had also something for this visa thing, but it's long and it's kind of complicated. But it's just this, that I had these two visa applications and specifically for this... Okay, I would not... It's not relevant for here also this. 
but just sometimes just the thing when I think like from the first time when I wanted just to okay you just apply and you do this you have this I don't know you are checked maybe 13 times with passport with everything and everyone is just where are you going? Why you are going? Are you the artist? I don't know. It's just like you are like suspicious. Like I don't know. But this is like everywhere where you travel, when you pass the border, you have this. But sometimes it just uh, it depends. So it's different for. It depends. It it's kind of different when you are from Kosovo. It is different. Yeah, when you are in all country. Yeah, it, yeah. It, when you go to Palestine, it's much more difficult. Yeah. 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 Wanted to ask, and if that concerns your work, whether the, whether the context in which you found yourself, no matter how traumatic it was to get there, and the sense it's traumatic, it's ridiculous, it's grotesque also, but uh, whether the context that you find yourself, which is an alien context, but it's kind of actually friendly context in many ways, if you meet similar people to you of your generation and you walk around town, I think it is actually fairly friendly. Uh, New York is a very embracing place. You very quickly don't not feel that you are from outside because everybody's from outside. What the hell? So my question is, how this context affected your work and your residency during, you know, whether thinking or producing or imagining or planning what you are going to do next? Uh, it made me think the difference of uh, the difference in the way of of racism and fascism of Europe and America. I don't know. Since I am living in European Union and most of my friends are migrants and refugees, and I am not, and I'm seen as the other. And again, even there, what I liked first from the first sight, it is that I, you really see much more, I don't know, people from all around, different races, and it, you feel like more, okay, it's, it's not so white as Europe. And, but again, just the way that the people are grouped, or where who lives in, you see this difference of the classes. So I was thinking more for this thing. I, I'm happy for some people that I met or whatever I was finding a kind of place that it's more public place because how, I don't know, how it is much more capitalism and everything is kind of more closed or just the parks are different. And, but then, for example, I, I was... <laughs> uh, I was happy when I was finding something that is kind of more free to go or to do. For example, okay, we met at the new school in this open event, so this was something that I, I'm happy that I found. So, or just or something else that was similar. These were like the things that I that I liked. Um, more, I was just comparing, like I don't know what I find what I find it different, just in the way that the society functions and. And what what is what I don't like also. I was just kind of collecting these things. That's so close. Um, yeah. Uh, well, uh, it is a really friendly place because no one is like in New York. Nobody's from New York, and uh, there's no shaming in uh, like uh, I don't know if you don't speak English that well. Nobody like kind of in the in Williamsburg. A lot of people don't even speak it, just Spanish, but I like that. Um, but uh, uh, the, it was uh, uh, my time there, uh, I use it because uh, after the award, I, I don't think, I don't know if it's the case with all awards, but you have it, uh, uh, then you have the date for your solo show when you come back, that should like kind of um, be about that experience that uh, you had in New York. So uh, it was very formative because I decided to do a sh show with the artists that I met there. 
like a like a collective like a group show. Uh, so that's the thing I'm currently working on, um, the bringing them uh, from New York and from South Africa and from Bosnia. Uh, and it's a bit like it's difficult because, you know, funds in Serbia. But anyway, that was a really um, that kind of a, a market oriented uh, like hysteria uh, made me like kind of think of uh, other modes of uh, doing stuff in art and that's why I decided to make the solo show into a group show and to kind of uh, uh, make uh, the, the whole experience that I shared with those people present in the, the gallery. That's it, basically. Yeah, it, it, for me it was a possibility to deconstruct all the American movies that I saw. <laughs> <laughs> you felt like in the middle of the movie yourself, yeah. no? Yeah, it was a deconstruction in a Daridan way, you know? <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Hmm? We only have so much time left. I have one short question about the production. Um, I know this, it's, it's not the most thrilling question to ask, but with the, assuming that there are going to be few potential applicants for the similar award, I thought that the, the, the production was really good in all three um, uh, projects. The, manufacturing aspect, the making aspect, the, the craftsmanship. And I know that it's probably not the easiest uh, thing to achieve sometimes because of the circumstances and lack of, uh, or um, not easily accessible advanced tools such as 3D printers or whatever. Um, can you say something about that? Any challenges, any uh, this is supposed to be a, a bit of a behind-the-scenes work, again, um, or behind-the-scenes view for, for potential applicants. Can you uh, do it again? <laughs> what is the question? <laughs> the, 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 the making, yeah. so I, I was able to see Chandresa's work in, in person. She had some found objects, she had some manipulated objects, she had some uh, custom crafted uh, cubicles, of course the video um, with sound. So we're talking fairly complex uh, mixed media or uh, uh, it takes skill and a lot of effort for a single person, for a single artist to craft all of those things, to just make, to put together all of those things. So the, the actual manufacturing or the fabrication of the, of the work. Mm -hmm. well, you, you are a sculptor, you're, you're an object maker. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I try to not do it anymore. <laughs> um, I don't know, um, it was, I mean, it was difficult in my case because I really had uh, that show coming and uh, that was my second solo show. I was like, just got out of the, out of the faculty. But um, in terms of production, you have a, a amount of money that you were like in Serbia, you, you got uh, the basic costs for it. So I had to deal with the really basic things like uh, painting the wall and uh, you know renting the TV. <laughs> so that's it. But the, um, I don't know. Like for basically painting the wall. <laughs> and did you paint also the chairs? I was all the yeah. time painting yeah. the chairs. But painting uh, my YouTube. Uh, yeah, the, I did it myself. Yeah, yeah. I found them at the football stadium, and then I painted them with the. Did you build the circular? Yeah. So that's yeah. The yeah, but that's uh, actually a different stuff, a, a thing because that was my solo show, uh, which I kind of uh, had a, a basic fund for it. So that's it. But. I don't know. Do you have something to? No, I don't produce objects. Ah, no. <laughs> I wanted to say, okay, trying to relate it with the, the production thing, it is a bit something else, but it's something that I want to say. I could answer also for this production, but it was also help of, of other people, but I wanted to say in general in this uh, uh, competition of, of things or, or just whatever you are doing. I think it's it's good to keep uh, it's good to keep working on what you really believe in and what has some kind of importance for you and it's like as long as you 
our truth for to yourself or to your truth, whatever whatever is this thing for, for, for somebody else. Because in general, I think that, and it's okay also to fail, and it's just, and I think that this is what's, what we need to remember also to whoever applies to, to some competition. And for me, I was, I was lucky with everyone, for example, the music, I think that the video, it's, here it was really loud, but in general, I just sometimes I just added this person on Facebook and I asked him and I explained the project and he said, yeah, you could use my music and it was okay. Then I just uh, someone helped me to 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 go for the stones. I was asking for this kind of stones and then someone helped me to make the cube. So it was like a lot of people that were involved. With them. But I wanted to say this other thing that I already said. So. Any other questions? Yeah, there is production in the, in the budget for the exhibition. I mean, each country has a different model for organization. No, because like a yeah. year before NASA mm -hmm. I was participating, like Corolla also finally is in development, and we, I don't remember that I had any. Yeah. So it's also changing probably because in this whole our small country, no, it's no, not so, you, you know, like there's there no security that the budget will be saying. That I bought it for everything else. No, but the, uh, you don't get any budget from the US to uh, organize the work in the countries that are organized. No. So the organization or the institution who organize the world secures conditions yeah. for the award in its own country. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, let's say, if, I was also in, the, in several times in Jerusalem and Albania, they also didn't have budget for any production. No. So, but since we took over the award, we always try to secure the budget, and it's always uh, an amount of money to, to be used for production, because an important part of the award is to induce the production of new works. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is a priority for us, so each artist has the exact same amount of budget to, to be able to produce three new works, which they propose in the application form. So and they oh, oh, the budget that they propose here, but no, is it money don't. or it's they one don't. budget? We don't propose a budget. No, they don't propose a budget, they propose an artwork. Okay. And then there's a budget and they are communicated with the amount of the budget that they will receive. Yeah. And it's always the same amount of uh, budget, but they receive a budget that they can use. Mm -hmm. That's great. I can also say the amount, but it's yeah, the same. <laughs> 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 uh, we try to increase all the time uh, the, the budget, but of course, I mean it's very hard because independent institutions that organize the award, they work without the budget for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not only this award, for instance, but a month, yeah. set in, in uh, yeah. I mean, this is like very precarious situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? or? I think I would just ask the three of them, uh, like, what would your advice be for the future winners? Just briefly, you know, from your experience. Future applicants. Yeah. Future applicants. Yes, future applicants. Maybe we have. You started before searching for creators and things, institutions. Before going before. forward. Yes. 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 And ask yes. to the, are you to prepare the weekly schedule? Proposing, for example, I, I, I when I was there, I went to meet Sophie Kavalakoulos from the film department of MoMA, mm -hmm. and I, I, I said I, I want to meet her, to meet her, mm -hmm. and I prepared this studio visit. And you did it. Yes, of course. Easy, but you have so it's, it's it's not about MoMA, of course. Just saying, if you don't wait to to be there and to start because. When you are there, it's everything is new, everything is big. And Maybe people are busy. June, July, it's a period very, you know, very hot and very... <laughs> so you, you can get confused by everything. So this is the only... Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Yeah. No, no, it changes. No, I was very surprised because that's not... Each country has a different day. Yeah. Yeah.
if you were a different person. Yeah. Ten minutes break and then we continue with the Thank you. <laughs> I'll just read briefly something from uh, their bios. So, Dritan Salmani was born in Ferizai in Kosovo, 1987. He currently works and lives between Pristina and Dogana. He completed his MA studies at the Arts University in Bournemouth. Uh, uh, yeah. Salmani approaches the idea of perceived reality by deconstructing formations of social, political, and cultural topics that have been embodied around him. At a young age, he was told to worship a country that no longer existed, which caused him to form a basis of skepticism towards any supposedly given reality. He later used this as a beneficial tool to reconstruct his beliefs into visual artifacts. You have more uh, on the material which is provided. Sesgi Boynik is a theoretician based in Helsinki. He completed his PhD in Yugoslav Black Wave Cinema. He co-edited Nationalism with NPR, Critical Reader, uh, 2007, and History of Punk and Underground in Turkey, 2008. Uh, recent publications include Noise After Battle, Language uh, Unrestrained, Spectre Books, 2015, with, with Mina Hendrickson, and there's further about uh, more recent work that he's doing. Uh, I'm really happy that we could show this uh, work through this presentation. This is a work that we are working on for a, an exhibition. And uh, it is also a good opportunity to have uh, Sezgin in discussion with, uh, with Dritan. And uh, I mean, I have to say that personally, I'm looking forward to, to the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rolanda, for the introduction. Um, thanks, everybody who's here. Um, I'm very excited to be tonight here, part of the uh, summer school, especially uh, as you mentioned, because um, the project we're going, I'm going to present, it's, uh, we're working together with Vala and Albert for the future exhibition. And I'm very excited to have uh, maybe the right man on the right place to, to speak about uh, the project. So thanks, Sezgin. My pleasure. <laughs> um, the, I, I chose I chose the uh, the work red tape to to, to to talk about, but I will take a, a different uh, position uh, because um, the work is so complex. It was so complex in, in many terms. So I, I I'd rather um, speak uh, through the kind of uh, through the eye of a director's cut instead of the official story of what is this, what I have done, and what I wanted to, to do. So, um, yeah, let's start. Uh, the first image, uh, okay, yeah. I, I, uh, on on, on uh, 2017, I was spending a lot of time in the Netherlands, 
because I was working on a commission project by the city of Amsterdam and then I had a, a, an opportunity to leave my country after a while I mean five years after I decided to to come back from the UK where I, I was studying so I was I was spending a lot of time in Amsterdam and then something was happening with myself while, while I was coming and going back I think I was like leaving my egg in a way you know just seeing things different from a different angle and uh, from a different view and also judging home differently so uh, most of you maybe are familiar with with this image so I mean um, Long, t long time after after the war, I mean, Kosovo was again a hotspot on on all of the uh, world news media because of the tear gas which was thrown by the opposition parties in the parliament, and the reason was a, a, a kind of a law which was they were trying to force to do this border correction between Kosovo and Montenegro as uh, one of the last uh, things to be done in order to get this visa uh, free uh, uh, thing done. So I was, I was quite shocked about what was happening and I was quite uh, somehow uh, uh, blinded by the fog which I saw in the parliament. And then I came back on the same time, on, like almost on the same days, on the same period, um, we were also suffering quite a lot from the air pollution and the image you see here is an image I did on the uh, uh, 29th of January it, which was also the day when, when I did the flag intervention which we're going to see next. So this is my original balcony, this is where I live in Arberia neighborhood which is kind of on the hills and you see the city center and probably also see the, the fog, the air pollution, this, this uh, gray oof, uh, uh, smog, whatever it's called. So I was like really, really depressed of seeing things not going in the in, in a good direction. And then I came here, even air pollution. And then something again happened. Uh, my I have a son, five years old. He was also suffering from, uh, I think, bronchitis or like these problems. And I said, this is too much. I have to do something. I have to do something. This is this is not what what I want to to be uh, merged in. This is not what what is uh, this is not normal. And and then I was trying also to uh, in a way uh, question my role. Who am I? What what like stodielat? Uh, what needs to be done? What what can an artist do if 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 I can position myself in that kind of role? And then uh, I was searching for for some some kind of uh, for, for for the real image of this place, and because I I I still believe that the image which was projected towards me was not not uh, representing me, and and there was this idea of of mixed flags, mixed language, mixed tear gas, and air pollution and bronchitis and you know, a lot of issues which for me were not normal and uh, I thought I, I need to find a way to, to somehow uh, cut this um, this kind of uh, theatrical play which was projected and if, if, I, if I was the audience then I, I needed to do something and then uh, I found this, this maybe you also know this image, uh, the, the painting from Rembrandt the uh, anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicolas Tulp. So for me, this this painting tells me a lot in terms of uh, what I needed to do. I, I really I really wanted to play the role of a neurologist and try to, to somehow find the nerve and touch the nerve of, of, of what was going on here because I was. I was really feeling itchy. I think my brain was feeling itchy. I couldn't stand this situation. And then um, uh, I was. I, I came with the idea of of, of, of the flag intervention, and I, I took this this image as as a starting point of what what I needed to to do. And then uh, I I also was like uh, trying to to figure out my role and. Uh, this is another image of another work series which I'm conducting since two and a half years or three years now, and I feel I feel in this level I feel that as an artist I, I have to, I, I've positioned myself in this kind of uh, 
uh, a stage where here or anywhere else I, I really uh, suffer or have an urge to somehow uh, link these these two very important topics which which I deal with the truth and bullshit because there was there was and there still is a lot of bullshit but I, I somehow try to extract the truth from from what is projected and what what uh, what I don't really understand and I don't really uh, uh, take it as a, as a as a given reality um, uh, and then I, I also uh, uh, was was trying to to somehow as I said at the beginning uh, to uh, to observe and to try to read the the the, the atmosphere from a from a distance and. Uh, from a kind of a distancing uh, effect, like in uh, Brecht, uh, which is uh, a theory which is used in mostly in theaters and in movies. And I said, okay, let me let me let me find an image. Let me find a, a kind of a, 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 a semiotic uh, of that and try to to go for it and then try to do it. And the reason, probably, why I, I did the project is that, uh, as I said. Um, I, I, I did gain some uh, financial support from the last project which I was doing in the Netherlands, and then I had this uh, this this urge of of trying to do another project, which was like a total shock for me after coming back. And the the, the project which I was doing before is the image which you see here. It, it was a public space uh, sculpture. Uh, for the uh, commissioned by the Amsterdam Light Festival, and now it's part of the uh, Amsterdam Light Collection. Uh, so I came back and um, I gathered, um, I gathered uh, a lot of friends, a lot of uh, uh, logistics around, and this is the original sketch which we used. Uh, and we on the on the on the day which we went to the to the roundabout, which is. It's called the flag roundabout. It's on the entrance of uh, of Pristina, coming from Skopje. Uh, we 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 went there on um, on on the morning of the day we saw the image from my balcony, which was on the edge of the tenth an anniversary of Kosovo's independence. And basically, uh, what I did is uh, uh, together with uh, some professional uh, friend workers. <coughs> We, I, I rented a 65-ton crane, and we went up and uh, we did cut the Albanian flag from the pole, and we did replace it with uh, with an offside flag, which is used in for 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 people who don't know, it's the flag which is used in on the football game. Um, <laughs> Good that you explained. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I think in Balkans many people know about football, but maybe we have also American audience who call it soccer, so it's that. So yeah, now we see some images of the action. So um, uh, to tell you also another story, the, 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 the pole we see in the roundabout was given as a present to the municipality on the edge of when Kosovo declared independence. This was given by the Rotary Club of Pristina. And on that time, there was a Kosovo flag installed there. After some two, three years, the party called Self-Determination, Vedvendosje, won the elections. And then illegally, they, they replaced the flag with the Albanian flag. Uh, and then that stayed for, uh, I don't know, Albert, maybe you know better than me how long the Albanian flag stayed here. More than five years. Until you removed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, I, I, so this is the crane approaching the roundabout. I did ask for a permission. I did ask for permission to shoot a movie. I was uh, on my on my request. I, I was writing very abstract text mm -hmm. because I thought maybe if I'm I'm going to be arrested, let's also mix this up. Let's make this uh, like unreadable and ununderstandable. But they were uh, they were being real bureaucrats, and they were I think they were really using red tape on my uh, request, and I didn't get it. And here we went on the morning, it was Saturday, and that's probably one of the reasons why we were not caught, even though at the time 
we were entering the roundabout, a police patrol came, and I just said, we're shooting a movie, and they said, okay, uh, do what, what, you, what you're doing, and then they left, they left. Here, the image you see on the right is the driver of the crane, which was very doubtful about what, what we were doing, uh, trying to do. And he even would, was trying to push me to quit and to go home. <laughs> but I will tell you another inside, which is... Can I ask a question, because maybe some people do not know also, about the flag on certain mm -hmm. flag. When you say Albanian flag, do you mean the state of Albania or, or another yet flag of a greater Albania? Or no, 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 the, the flag of state of Albania. The flag of the state of Albania. Sorry for not. Uh, for there's not. no other flag. So there's mm -hmm. an Albanian flag, a Kosovo flag. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, my intention really was not to somehow touch the Albanian flag or, or you know any other flag. My intention was to produce this Rembrandt uh, image in a, in a different way. And my intention was to produce this distinctive effect, first to somehow summarize what I was feeling, and secondly also to um, produce a new kind of moment, a new, a new, a new, to open a new chapter and, and uh, yeah, uh, to tell more about the logistics. Um, most of the workers or the guys you see here, most of them are my friends and 90% of them came without any payment or fee. Even the guy who printed the flag for me, uh, uh, after we did the intervention, he said that he doesn't want the money because he was also feeling proud about what we did. I don't know if it's a feeling of pride or whatever, but also another detail is one of the workers fainted at the time we were going up because we miscalculated the height totally <laughs> and uh, it's very important also to tell you a secret uh, I failed two times to do this no one knows except me and my friends so probably the reason why I did this is that I was also I've, I've heard from friends that they were also being suspicious about my idea so there was they were also getting tired about what I was trying to do. Because first we went with a very small crane. We miscalculated everything. <laughs> Secondly, I hired another crane. Cost me a lot of money. Again, we failed. This means two weeks before. And then I was feeling more and more and more pressure. I said, get me the, the biggest crane you can get. So this, is, this was working for Bechtelenka, the highway. So this guy brought the crane only for me, and I paid a lot of money to him, but still I think we reached the top. And uh, uh, yeah, so now we see another image, it's us up, up there, and this is the, the, the time when we cut the, the flag and we put the offside flag. And um, 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 we went, after we did, I thought this is Kosovo, this is Pristina, because I did some interventions before in the, s in the start of my career. I thought this flag will stay at least for one day, at least. It was Saturday and stuff. But I think because of the tensions in the parliament and with the idea of, I mean, uh, with the idea of blurring image of what was happening, I think someone pushed the red button and the police were there in 10 minutes also the representatives by of, of the municipality and they were all asking for me i went home and as soon as i went home i sent a kind of a press release to some friends of mine journalists just to tell them that i'm the guy and you know i'm, I'm behind this and then i went on social media i was Every, everything I saw was like hate speech. Everyone was really, really aggressive and really hating me what I did. I even received a lot of uh, life threats on Facebook from, from some nationalists who don't like to touch any, any, any flag and any kind of... They don't like any other color. One of the reasons why people were very uh, confused was that they were mixing with, <laughs> with the Macedonian flag, this one. So they thought this is a Serbian secret service provocation, provocatia. <laughs> and then, you know, I, 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 I received a phone call by the crane guy because they read his number on the crane and he said, Riton, you have to come, I'm in trouble. I said, I will come. And I just told my wife, I have to go. I don't know when I come back. <laughs> and the funny thing, the most funny thing about the whole is that when I went, I didn't know that live TV was there. So I was on live TV. And I, I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't even tell them to stop or, or something. So 
I went there, I tried to explain to the director of the uh, uh, inspection of Pristina that I am Britton Selmani, this work is called Red Tape because of a crazy French prince one sometime did invent this <coughs> procedure and this is a, a flag intervention, it's called contemporary art and then the police just told me Come with us. <laughs> then I got arrested. And, uh, but uh, I, I was sent to the police station, and they were also pushing me a lot to bring back the Albanian flag. And they told me, where is the Albanian flag? Where is the Albanian flag? We have, we, 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 after we removed it, we put it in a van. And I said, the Albanian flag, it's in, on a warm place. It's being, uh, it's being warm. And we had to bring it back. And the police got the offside flag. and. Uh, I was, uh, at the end of the day, I was released because um, the constitution doesn't mention anything about touching other countries' flags. Mm -hmm. I didn't touch the Kosovo flag, so I touched the Albanian flag. But I got two fines by the municipality to pay. Was, one was uh, 500 euro, which was for the company who did violate the public space, and the other one was 200 euro for the artist. And uh, after, after the intervention, there were, there were some friends of mine who, who wanted to do a crowdfunding, found crowding, whatever it's called. I said, no, I don't want that because I didn't want to be a conformist artist. I knew that uh, I did uh, bite something and I knew that someone is going to bite me back. So I, I wanted to, to somehow also uh, um, pay this differently, but it ended up that uh, I think it's here. Huh? Yeah, it's written on Albanian. I I did make a proposal to the, to the municipality after I did the intervention because I said I don't want to pay 500 euro, but I will buy uh, trees and plant them for 500 euro for uh, 700 euro. They they had some meeting. They tried to, uh, but uh, they tried to to uh, discuss it. But I think. I think they, they, they didn't want to be fooled twice, so they said, no, you have to pay. And then I had to pay, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm still archiving a lot of documents, which I still see, I still find on the internet, I'm, uh, I'm still uh, working on, on the work, we're still working on it, and uh, uh, I don't want to, uh, to, to, to take more time because I, I really want to give the floor to Sesgin, but no, in, in no. terms of uh, Karl Andres saying that uh, art is what we do and culture, culture is what is what is being done to us, I think I did this piece because I was fed up with what was cult what culture was doing to me, and I don't know if you call this an art or what, whatever it is, but I really I couldn't sleep because of two things. I really needed to do it and because I was failing. So failure gave me a lot of energy because it became, after failing two times, it became a ritual. We were, uh, we were uh, waking up at five in the morning and going at the roundabout. And after two times failing, I was waking up on that same time. And I said, I have to do it, otherwise it's, I have to suffer a lot. So uh, yeah, I also, took this as a, this is a report from a TV, local TV, national TV, but in Albanian you can sense that the guys, the official guys from the municipality had no idea what this is. So for me, this is also important probably to, to show. This is the director Por favor, 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 por favor
Kosovarit që simbolizon ofsajtin në sportin në futbolit e që dorit të jetë artisti Kosovar Driton Zemani të lëvoj arsy e në këti dhe primi. Për mes vendosje se këti simboli në vend të arti komtar, Zemani fërë se reflektoj për situatën në të si vendodhet shteti ti aktualisht. Ju nës do situar të shamit të ngritën për të shënuar fitore, të rion fërca arritja. Ata ngritën edhe për të shënuar dërzim, humbje vetëje ose pranim të fitore së tjetër për modë individit për se shësris. Flamit shpe është bënë edhe sinonimet të humbje së kredarist të besimit e optimizmet. Qëllimi që pa të artisti Zedmani i për që e u kretuarit shpendamiti i si liposimi e ti është përndahë në profilin e ti në Facebook. Arsisht kësaj, se mani nga inspeksionu dënua me gjohë për të mëtim të pronës publike e një të vëpruaj dhe në kompanin që kreo puna, ndërsa fjamuri komptar pas dite o këthyja në vendin ku ishte. Një fjamur tjetës... How to stop this now? Ok, this was the... This was the last image. So uh, I think in Albanian, the journalist uh, in a way mixed some, some, uh, some things because I was not concerned about my country. I was, I was concerned about myself, my son, the heir, and my position towards what was happening, not, not towards what was going on with my country and the idea of, of, uh, of doing something related to, to Kosovo itself. As I said, I was only aiming to produce this moment or this new 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 kind of image and this 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 flag of despair this flag of scoring an auto goal because i think scoring auto goals sometimes can can help in changing also the course of the game because the game which was projected was too boring for me and also too dangerous to sniff that air so um, yeah thank you <laughs> thanks thanks I don't know what is my role here because really it's very interesting and you are very clearly I kind of gave the picture what actually you have done and uh, and uh, what was the what was the idea of your intervention look like I mean generally I think everybody can just uh, just read this from 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 your presentation and the images we saw and the story you told that that the question of nationalism and the national representation is very contradictory, it's very complex and to deal with this question, in fact, even you, if you if you devise such a simple intervention which is not some complicated uh, abstract consideration what you first said as like semiotic yeah. sort of sign issues. But still, the nationalism itself is so sort of a living matter almost. Like uh, there is its own dialectic is so complex that such work can cause so much uh, discussion, issues. Issue discussion. Then, but I think first, you have to mention a bit more about that discussions. I think you mm -hmm. went uh, went a bit uh, a bit uh, quick with those because the work itself is more interesting. What happened afterwards? Mm -hmm. All that situation and especially what happened with you, because your artistic position here, the little glimpse that we got is that you, what you referred is uh, you referred to Bertolt Brecht to this uh, distinctive the model of alienation, let's say. Yeah. Or like, let's say, distanciation as it is translated sometimes. That, so, is this here that you want to distance, of course, from some identity question that is per se reflected through flag, but when we hear your story, we see the, the effect is completely the opposite. That least thing has sticked into your body even more. <coughs> so the idea that you had initially, let's say the artistic idea of distanciation, came back to you with a, with a 
more identification with a, with a further attachment to this flag which otherwise you would just ignore <laughs> so uh, that kind of issues I think it is important to discuss like uh, with Riton we have discussed this work quite quite many times and and my plan is to further this this uh, intervention and this work and this moment what happened to try to find some entry points maybe to discuss those aesthetical or I would say uh, formal questions of, of regarding nation national representation or nationalism as such so uh, what do you think about these contradictions um, I, I mean um, my my ideas were quite quite uh, simple and uh, uh, because I was I was uh, I was trying trying to, to, to get to get the, 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 the story try to uh, to understand what was going on and then then I I, I, I ended up in this kind of uh, matter and th in this kind of action and because bec probably because uh, because uh, you know as a child I changed so many uh, so many images on the classroom of the presidents and we changed so many flags and I remember as a kid that some flags were not very were, were not very uh, uh, how, how to put it it, it was a danger on, 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 on when I when I was a kid it was a real danger to show the red and black flag around, and then we ended up with the with the new blue and yellow flag. And for me, this was too much. This was too much of uh, identity change. Too much of uh, uh, of um, this uh, uh, operating systems. Too much of Do this. Do you mean replacing Yugoslavian flag with Serbian flag? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I'm referring to that. I remember all. I remember Tito's. A photograph on my classroom. I remember Skanderbeg, and now I, I still I see Hash, I see Hashim Tachi on the classrooms. So then, at a certain point, I said, you know what? I hate these flags. I don't want to be uh, somehow related to these. I, I I was searching for my kind of flag to represent this this lost battle with ourselves because really we were on that position. And then uh, I, maybe maybe you put it more 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 uh, right than I did, but I was trying both to do the alienation, but also the neurologist, as I said. Yeah. And then, as 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 also Sezgin wrote on one of the uh, essays, part of the notes on contemporary art book, after. After I, I, I did what I did, I, I really understood how close and how attached nationalism to our skin was because of the threats I received and because I saw also a kind of a distinction of, 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 a, of a great group of people. I, 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 I received phone calls, emails, Facebook messages from only a few people who understood it and who, who really somehow were approaching me to give help and also to try to, to gather money, but I also received life threats. So I somehow even balanced uh, my position after I did what I did. But it's also true that I think the flag intervention triggered a chain of events, especially the other event one week later when the government went to replace the Albanian flag with the Kosovo flag and there was a kind of a sporadic protest of normal people who didn't allow the government to, to put Kosovo flag. So this produced a new, a new situation, very abstract. And also there was a lot of debate on who we are, where we're going and what is our flag. And I mean what is also our um, new political and cultural identity. Well, look, nationalism, what I think, I mean, that's only one theory, is has a certain materialist existence. Like, uh, uh, of course, these discussions, what is identity of Kosovo, of, of, of Albania, or, or what flag should correspond, and these are done what I remember since 90s, and we can go trace back to 80s, let's say like this, the, the, the discussions both in culture and in politics that are still, I would say, actual, is done in many different ways and it is 
all the time reproduce something which to us looks like a very abstract. As you say, like, nationalism is everywhere, it's abstract. But I am not in favor so much to, to see a nationalism as a phenomenon which is everywhere. For the formal purposes, it is important to limit nationalism. And I think this work with some strange... For, I still didn't develop this theory, but I think this intervention, if you look with concrete connections there, the TV, the things that you mentioned, if you build this narrative, we could limit this nationalism and we can come to one core question here that is emerging but not yet there. It is a question of the state. And I think within that question of the state, which is de facto political question, we can also see how this ideological apparatus called nationalism actually is materialized here, you see, and it is reproduced, you know. So, like, it's that sort of, that sort of interventions, that sort of breaks, like this, can also help us to understand the, the ordinariness of nationalism, which is like every day, every second, as Althusser, and following that, Balibar said many times, if we are not reminded of this ideology and nationalism, we will stop being nationalists. Of course, we are reminded every minute of this nationalism. So I think this kind of cuts and artworks, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but this is what I can ask to you, or we can open these questions, is maybe the art, because the, 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 the genuine uh, position of art is actually to propose this kind of distanciation, this kind of uh, break points, this kind of shortcuts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in that field, maybe we can see how, how nationalism works. Uh, it's just a question, yeah. because it's, so, it's based on some synthetic operations, some sort of analytical propositions, and, and uh, different narratives to speak mm -hmm. generally. Uh, if I speak about my artistic practice, I, the question will be no. But if I speak about the, the particular project, the this, yeah, yeah, this, one. This, this means yes. Because this probably can, can, can be the, 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 the answer to your question. Uh, yes, I really wanted to, to do that, and I don't know if I did it, and I, I'm, I'm not really, uh, I, I didn't really think if I, if I can manage to do that. I was too, too immersed in the logistics of, of somehow reaching the point if, if I do it or not. But I, what I wanted to do is somehow uh, change also my thoughts, also try to, to somehow uh, do a dialogue with myself through the exchange. So change through the exchange, through going there, th through an action. I, I knew that a reaction will come, but I, I really needed an action. Also, also in, 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 in somehow uh, uh, reaching also some dark points within myself, and also, as I said, um, like killing some of some of my uh, already installed softwares which I was like uh, also working with and only because I was not here for a time in Kosovo I saw these these uh, red dots and I, I and then at a certain point they became too much and I said I have to do this and um, luckily we we did it because we were like almost on that level but uh, um, I, I don't know if for any other projects this 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 question can can be applied but in, in the idea of touching this I think it 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 slowly it turned into a yes because also of of the feedback we got about why we why that flag you know the question was why that it it was seen as a uh, kind of untouchable element of our our nation or whatever you call it and then and and then suddenly that was touched so what now you know what what needs to be done after that and then this opened a lot of debate and i think it's still ongoing of, about who we are and how nationalism can somehow enter through the back door and then you know play the, like lead the dance without even noticing it let me ask one more concrete thing yes 
but just wait until you finish it. No, you can, I think. All right. Uh, I did, want, did not want to ask a question, but may ask. I don't have any further this kind of uh, speculative theories or whatever, but one thing you mentioned passingly of one, I think, very important fact that could help us to enter even more into this, this, uh, this uh, material, concrete, a political side of this story. And I think without politization of nationalism, we cannot escape this abstraction. This flag, the Albanian flag there, actually is illegal. It has to be a Kosovo flag. Yeah. But this is, this is something that we, we now have to reconsider and to see this project, the, the questions this project opens, actually opens the very fundamental question of what constitutes Kosovo. You know, like this, this kind of simple things is where we can start from. Maybe you are willing to tell you. Uh, I, I, I can't pr really tell uh, a lot, but all I know is that since I, I was born and as a child, Albanian flag was illegal here and it's still illegal and it was illegal. It was not illegal. It was no, illegal no. during the Yugoslav time. No, it was not illegal. No, no. I, I mean, I remember, no. I remember as a child when, you know, when showing your Albanian flag, it was very, very uh, risky. The Albanian flag was legalized in the 40s in Kosovo. Yes. And but you can, yeah. but yeah. I, I, I was born in 87, so as, at the time I remember I was a very small child, it was in the 90s. It was dangerous to show it, but it yeah. was legal. Yeah. No, maybe let's not maybe go to this, look, I think uh, this kind of uh, discussions to go to now project, to the history, you know what, even five years we cannot figure out uh, precisely what actually means the status of this or that flag and let's not go to 1945 or 1960 you know it's even more blurry than enters uh, more layers of contradiction what I am in favor is to reduce those and to try to find simple things to start from very simple things like what for example if I ask you like this if you change if your intervention, instead of Albanian flag, you put Kosovo flag, mm -hmm. what do you think would happen? Mm -hmm. This was my question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't thought about this, okay. never. Sorry. I don't know, I mean... Yeah. Uh, Can I just add something? I just want to... Actually, citizens, a number of us, were demanding from the city government to do this for years after they replaced the, the Kosovo flag. Yeah. So yes, yes. And it, there is a pressure for them to do it. But one thing which is important to mention, this is not an official site or something. A private NGO or company or something put up the flag. Yeah. So even because of our flag there was not this Rotary Club yeah, yeah. They gave it as a present. As soon as you put it on, you know, then you cannot touch it. This is the constitution of Kosovo. So if you if you touch the flag of Kosovo, that would be something else. But everyone else is doing it all the time, right? So in this case, they went after an artist, uh, but they, uh, <coughs> the municipality of Pristina was removing Kosovo flags. Officially. Yeah, like in all uh, positions where they were. But how the government tries now to navigate within this uh, situation, because yes, it's about the state and the law. How is the law respected? And this is not, when you say nationalism, this is retro-nationalism. This is like nationalism of, of some of another country, right? So it's not a Kosovar nationalism. So it's just to, mm -hmm. uh, because maybe that still doesn't exist or something. But now that if you go around that site, and it became a site because of reactions when they removed the flag, uh, now the Kosovar government created another pole in another roundabout, close to that roundabout, and had another Kosovar flag. Right, so they just try to balance this yeah. thing, and then, uh, and now you can see, for instance, in the main governmental building, they erected two or three more Kosovo flags. So they just try to balance yes. it to make this site less visible, basically. They replaced the flag, again, after public pressure, for the 10th anniversary, 
But then there was some pressure from the other side of the political spectrum, and then they kept it only for something like 10 days. And then they put back another Albanian flag. But it, they, uh, it, it's yeah. correct, it shows how they uh, improvise the state, improvise the law, right? And they don't really, uh, it's still some sort of a parallel state structure which doesn't really know what the state is or should be. Despite right? of all this improvisation and spontaneous uh, whatever manifestation, something is still solid there, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I'll get away the question. Well, I you forget. I just wanted to ask him what if it was a comfortable flag. Do ah. you think that uh, people would have reacted? I think to this was the flag, offside flag, so you know, like for me it's like you are totally No, no, I get what we got flags. I am just asking you to know how he feel. Does he think that people care the same about? Uh, Kosovo flag as much as they do about the uh, eagle and the uh, I think I got the answer after I did the intervention. So the, the, the answer will be that they care more about the Albanian flag rather than the Kosovo flag in most of the people here. But uh, if what if that was a Kosovo flag? You mean my flag to be a Kosovo no, flag or the no, original no, one? No, the, uh, the original flag. No, I, 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 I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I could say now that I would have replaced that one as well, but I don't know. Maybe that could be too brave. All I know that if you touch uh, the symbols of a state, you can go at least for one, two years in jail. You can go. I, I, know, I knew that uh, this is not the flag of Kosovo, so I was, in a way, I was safe, even though I got arrested. And then I got the fine to pay. Yes. But to correct something, probably for myself, um, probably the Albanian flag during the 90s was not illegal, but I grew up as a kid, I know how risky that was to show that flag. I call it illegally on the, on the, on, Here, on the occasion how, how often I saw it, and I remember how, how present it was. And for me it was very interesting to grow up on a period where Albanian flag was somehow not official, and again it's not official, but it represents still also me in a way. It it represented. Well, you talk about 90s, not only flag, but also people were illegal. So it's not like a complete <laughs> apartheid state. <laughs> which, uh, look, uh, let's not go yeah, back, yeah, yeah. you but know? Just to correct myself. Yes. And you started with this uh, very strong image of, uh, of a political image in fact, of intervention in parliament. And that is, in a way, I would say, could be entry point to, to talk about all these issues regarding state, nation, you know, like Vete Vendosje, who is behind of this action, in fact, is, is uh, seen as a more nationalist, or let's say, uh, a movement and a political platform and party as well that is clearly asking the nation question of nation, either from also questioning Fanon or whatever, but this kind of weather is a uh, is, uh, Kosovo decolonized and, and all these things. But then here you had this, this question of nationalism there uh, reflects in, in in interesting, interestingly, uh, with this action mm -hmm. also, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. most of the people, Kosovo people, were saying like, "Well, we were in the process of joining, uh, joining Europe, or and yeah. this kind of inter intervention spoils the national image, the national representation, and this is done by the by the by the movement." that is maybe Again. nationalist or... And then you also have this... Why I ask this, maybe I couldn't formulate precisely, I don't want to go long with this, but like a uh, question is, there is not one nationalism also. There is nationalism which is very reactionary nationalism. The nationalism for per se, let's say the bourgeois nationalism. And then there is this kind of organizational nationalism mm -hmm. or earlier 
men this described as a revolutionary nationalism. Yeah. So, I mean, that is all open questions. Of course, this is not. I don't say we, we have to discuss now, but but these interventions open up these questions. And without intervention, that's maybe the, to to simplify everything. Without intervention, we cannot even have a question. You know, like uh, Napoleon said, and Lenin used many times, let's first do a battle, then discuss, you know? <laughs> so, like, here I have that sort of uh, optimism, you know, that you did it, you made it, the action, and then now we discuss. Without that, it would be everything bit... <laughs> Pro like prob abstract. Probably, yeah, because I was also, as I, as I said, I was ask, also asking a lot of questions first to myself and then related to the geography and the position of, of my country, of my place, of my neighborhood, of the air and of the everything around. But, uh, um, yeah, um, maybe it's, it's that. Maybe, maybe like, uh, on an unconscious way, I also did produce a big question mark. My idea was just to question the given reality which was projected to me and also to question the role of, of what is real and what is, what is a real projection of the real. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I also did ask that question and then also a lot of people related to my question and they also somehow, as uh, Ron was saying, felt also offside, like me, you know. They were, they were feeling the same, the same uh, position of their selves towards, towards uh, the, the, the present or the radical or the hidden nationalism around. So, yeah. So I think it's time now to open a discussion to the floor. If you have any questions or comments, please go. Uh, just now that you said uh, that first it should be like an intervention and then to discuss about it. Do you think also that the gas is an intervention? Yes. Yeah, but I mean, not to say you support it, but do you think it was necessary to discuss what afterwards afterwards was discussed? Uh, well, I yes, I obviously think like that. That the uh, situation was so hopeless, and in some way it's still so. This sort of, this uh, strong interventions did did uh, let's put in this way, left certain marks, marks, you know, in the society. In, I mean, I don't like this language, but in collective consciousness, you know, like people do the, really, this is like a very strong thing, what happened after 99, and yes, I do. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not in a position to favor my artworks. I, I, I'm, I'm, I can speak about them, but not tell them that my artworks have done something. I know that my the flag interventions has produ produced a new moment, a new kind of debate and questioning what was going on. But uh, I think many, many problems, many actions of other people as well have produced, are producing it. Take, for example, the Kosovo national football team. They produce a kind of new energy, and people people somehow relate to Kosovo after they win games. So it's 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 something which uh, many many uh, many uh, uh, people, many uh, actors play on this role. It's 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 a, it's a theater. It's not just a one man show. And I believe in that, but not not only myself. Basically, the word revealed a lot. So it, it maybe it didn't produce a moment, but it revealed and verified uh, certain uh, processes within the government and administration, how it functioned, because even the police didn't know how to react. You know? Yeah. And, and even when the government went and put the Kosovo flag back, it was not a lot of people. It was like trying to protect the Albanian flag with some taxi drivers standing <laughs> there, whatever. But the media, yeah. the media are part of the problem because media, they call the Albanian flag, they call it the national flag. There's this discourse 
which is still stuck from uh, when Kosovo was a province. So that's the national flag. Uh, but I mean, everyone who knows about states know that the national flag of Kosovo is the Kosovo flag. Right? So they call it the national flag. The national, they touch the national flag. It's like mm -hmm. uh, something. So it's very difficult to make this transition because how do you craft a new political nation in the 21st century? It's, it's a difficult process because the Albanian national flag before uh, was the flag of resistance. So that's why people are bound to it so much. So we got a state in 2008, but then you have to leave this flag a bit aside and then you have a new flag. And how do you do that without a large discussion, like a process? And the government just, and the international community thought that you could just introduce a flag and it's done. Right. So they don't do a lot about it. Right. So they just think that if you wave the flag, and it's, it's really, uh, I mean, it's even how they selected the flag was a joke, <laughs> in a way. But, uh, and the design is not the best. It was a competition? It was a competition, but like uh, a competition which was uh, orchestrated. With, with the guys. I, I understand. Orchestrated, <laughs> uh, orchestrated, I mean, even our constitution was initially written in English, basically. So there are a lot of issues there, but, uh, but uh, and this work just, it, it verified few points, you know, there's few points. In the end, some of from the liberation army made the flag. In the end, uh, also, I mean, the designer, uh, by just very small changes. By accident, the designer was a former Kelly fighter, because who can produce, who can change your national flag? A Kelly fighter. Right, because he fought, he's... Legitimacy, yeah. yeah legitimacy. So, there are some threads where you can trace how they uh, thought this, but then you have uh, another process, the uh, reappearance of the Albanian national flag in these positions in the city uh, gave legitimacy for the Serbian flags, which are Serbian-dominated municipalities. Because all of a sudden, they were saying, I mean, you're doing the same with the Albanian flag. So. Why should we respect the Kosovo flag if you don't respect it? So this is another layer uh, which we see happening. Uh, and it's, I would not even call it nationalism. It's like pure populism uh, used for uh, elections all the time. So it's not that they are unaware of what they are doing. And it's, it's super cheap. You know, this flag just became uh, you know, not as it was uh, before. Because this was a flag which uh, had a different position in the public life. Nowadays, I mean, it, it, it doesn't have the same position. Yes, Sorry thanks. No, no, really. no, very, very good, thank you. Yes. You clarified a lot of... Uh, I, I have a question. I'm not sure whether I will be able to actually articulate my question clearly. But I was following your presentation, and it's fascinating. But it, I, I, and I forgot that it started with Parliament, but then what I remember was that smog. This completely depressing picture of the of Pristina kind of swimming or you know in a, in a oh, spot second one. this one, yeah, and that, and, and that is something that I understood, touched you or, or made you sh shrink and and feel Jesus Christ, what's happening? You know, how could we? And and, and then from that from that sensation, which was. Uh, probably both intellectual but also physical somewhat, you you notice and I, and I understand you notice because it was somewhere in the in your sight that all with the with the flag. The, the, the rest of your presentation was about was uh, the way I understood it that you sick and tired of flags and the symbols and the wars over the symbol. You don't want to take part in the war over symbolic uh, 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 in fact, in, in, in fact, very strangely constructed symbols, whether in the past or in the future. So for me, when I think about this uh, um, this intervention, I, I I understood it as a as an expression of of incredible disappointment, and kind of almost pain uh, with what's going on. But above all. Confusion of of where, where where you know I cannot say I but where you guys are now, and I think that as such 
that the use of the offside flag, which I didn't understand first because I also thought, oh, why didn't you put Kosovo flag? You know, here we are, the citizens of Kosovo, let's give out a flag. But you know, the flag has its own problems, and flags have problems. Symbols have problems, and 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 that 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 fight for the symbolic domination of that it is a, a, a struggle with the war is actually somewhat captured by that, although this is and it doesn't mean that you answer the questions, but you, you touched on that kind of very sensitive you know kind of spot <laughs> that um, that it's very important to to touch because this is what what you guys are for, what the art is for, to make us pay. I think it was a very good strategy not to replace it with the Kosovo flag. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Yeah. And, and later on, sure. to help with the flags. This, you know, this man it, was completely it, the opposition. Yes. And, and they were like, oh, he's an artist, football flag, or whatever. It's, it's funny, I only, I only hear it now, I never thought about that, yeah. really. No, no, this was, you know, a rhetorical question yeah, that yeah, I asked, but... but uh, I never thought about But I see time. that others wanted to ask it. You know what, with this question I had in my mind, I forget something to say. The real Brechtian thing in your presentation actually is not alienation. It's something else. It's abstraction. You know why? Because like if you read Brecht's, let's say, Tripreni novel, you know, what is the, the genius of Brecht? Is that he can tell the love story, but will start in Africa. For example, three penny opera, and he can tell in half a page. You start to read, and in half a page, you already you start with a war in the South Africa. There is a soldier who lost his leg, and the state is giving him 70 pounds, and then he is an old novelist about that. So I think if you want to add some Brecht here, you could go a bit more off from Kosovo. Like this offside should be uh, literally applied to this. Maybe afterwards mm -hmm. when you want to make a publication, because this is the global, this is the question of conjuncture, this is question of this this uh, pollution, this whatever is in Kosovo is like a junk of the of the of the global neoliberal capitalism. I mean, if you look from that point of view, then when we come to this little you know this little intervention of like, it could be. So, and actually, you did by showing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't read this as a, some personal uh, view. Pristina is, but it's. A world. You yeah, see yeah. here a world. This is like a, uh, also the, the perspective is larger. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but, but the starting point was my positioning towards what was happening. Whether it was Kosovo or not, I didn't choose this place where I was born. So this is what I call home, and I did it here. I didn't do it because I'm an artist from Balkans and I have to do political art. No, I do this kind of art because I grew up here and I'm, I'm a breed of here. I can't be a Matisse drawing Tahiti drawings <laughs> because I've never been there and I don't know the flora of Tahiti, but I draw this kind of flowers. Sometimes they are thorny, sometimes they are very personal, like the Love Letters project with the plastic bags, but I suffer from the urge of touching nerves. I don't know. Sometimes I touch my own nerves, sometimes the nerves of my wife, sometimes I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Good touch. Oh.